Good afternoon, Ange. Uh, the Hungarian journalist's question, Szabó Csatos from Fradi TV, Fradi Media, is whether you know something about uh, the Hungarian side and if you have any special relationship, maybe in your past, uh, with Hungarian football, one specific person. Yeah, yeah no, um, well aware of uh, Ferenc Varos and, and the side and, you know, the kind of team they are. Obviously, we've watched them uh, closely over recent weeks um, in the Europa League and obviously in their own... Uh, competition um recent history as well last year obviously they the, the two sides met in uh, qualification for champions league so we're well aware of the team and um you know we know uh you know it'll be a, a good challenge for us they're they're a good team uh you know they had a disappointing result in the league on the weekend but um i think you know he, he, he the manager um, rested a few players so we expect a good challenge tomorrow and uh, yeah, I have a strong link with uh, Hungarian football. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to spend uh, a few years with uh, the great uh, Ferenc Buskas, um, an absolute gentleman and uh, somebody who uh, holds a, a very dear place in my heart because he, um, you know, he, he he looked after me for for two or three years. We had a very close relationship, and uh, through him, I guess there is a connection there. Just for my question, Angie, just give us a, a squad update, if you would, in and out. Yeah, um, so a uh, sort of clean bill of health from the weekend. Everyone got through the game okay, so no issues coming out of the, the, the guys who played in the weekend. Um, uh, coming back in, uh, the only one change will be uh, um, Adam, young Adam Montgomery is available. He's, uh, he trained with the team uh, yesterday and today and has got through unscathed. So um, he's ready to go and um, the rest will be very similar to the weekend. In terms of the, the European results, there was obviously a lot of scrutiny after the, the Leverkusen game, but mm. could, considering what happens since, how much do you think the Celtic squad are in a better place than what they were? before the Leverkusen game? Yeah, look, I mean, I said before the weekend's game that <coughs> we're definitely better prepared. I mean, we're just more settled. The players are more settled. Um, you know, everyone's just a little bit more settled. We've had more time uh, together as a group. Um, the international break was good for us, I think. Uh, you know, not just for the fact that we got our players back um, healthy, but the ones who stayed here, we could actually do some work with and, <coughs> you know, um, yeah, we're just a more settled squad. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, look, I think the, the one thing about the European games, both games we've had so far, we've, we've shown that we, you know, in moments where we, when we take the game to the opposition, we, we can, you know, we can um, make an impact. Uh, but we, we've certainly also paid for our mistakes, and that's the level of European competition where, you know, you can, you know, our football in general, I thought, has been good in both games, even the Leverkusen game. I know we lost uh, quite convincingly, but anyone who watched that game will know that we had our fair share of chances uh, to make an impact. But at the same time, the flip side of that was that, you know, both against Batiste and Leverkusen, we got punished for our mistakes. And, um, you know, that's, that's part of the sort of our learning process, um, you know, playing in, uh, you know, at this level. Is there anything you can do as coach now to, to ward off that type of, mistakes coming from individuals or coming from a back line or coming from a team that you know that, that will get punished here have you had to change anything recently no it's not a matter of changing it's like i said it's just part of the learning process and um part of the evolution of the team and um you know i think from my perspective there was enough positive signs in both those performances to continue on what we're doing um you know i think anyone will tell you part of the challenge playing you know, good quality teams is can you cause them problems? It's easy to set up a team to stop the opposition, but you know if you really want to make an impact in in, in these uh, in, in Europe, you've got to be able to hurt oppositions yourself. And I thought we showed that uh, in both games. Um, as I said, part of that process is also learning that um, you know you, you're going to get punished for, for your mistakes by quality opposition. So that's just part of the learning process, and, and not, not nothing that sort of derails what you're trying to do. <clears throat> Hi Ange, in the context of the group and your hopes of progressing, how important is this game? Yeah, look, um, you know, it's a game we, we've we've got to win if we want to keep our hopes alive. Um, you know, obviously the other two uh, sides um, in the in the group have won their two opening games, so you know you kind of know that um, you know we've, we're going to bridge that gap. We've got to win our games uh, that we've got remaining, and particularly the two games at home we have, and uh, starting tomorrow. And uh, 
So you kind of know the, the significance of tomorrow's game within the context of us wanting to progress. So no shying away from that. We need a win tomorrow. Do we make too much from the outside, Ange, about confidence and momentum or does it make a difference going into this game on the back of two impressive away victories? No, look, I, you know, I don't know whether you make too much of it. I, I guess there's always a different feeling within the walls of a football club and it's very hard for people outside to sometimes get an accurate gauge on that because, you know, they're, they're working on limited information and, and most of the time they're just working on, you know, what the results have been. So, you know, I think results are going well, so that means confidence must be high or results aren't going well. And, you know, maybe people are struggling, but the one thing I will say is right from the start, irrespective of sort of our inconsistency in results, is that the mood's still been fairly positive the whole way through. There hasn't been a time where I felt, OK, we, we're, you know, the players maybe are, are lacking a little belief or, or, or you know, um, sort of determination to, to get to where we want to. So <clears throat> from that perspective, there hasn't been a major shift, but there's no doubt you, you win a couple of games. And I think the manner in which we won against Motherwell, you know, does uh, give the group, um, you know, some added sort of confidence and belief. Um, but it's it's not a major shift from, from what's been here. As I said, I think the prevailing thing for us at the moment is it just feels like we're a more settled group. There's, there's no one coming and going. There's no one sort of coming in at the last minute. Everyone sort of has got to know one another, our football, the way we train. So I think that's the biggest sort of shift I've noticed in the last sort of two weeks. From the BBC. <coughs> Excuse me. Hi, Ange. Um, obviously, this is the, the going to be a first game in Scotland where the, the COVID passport has been introduced. Uh, I wonder if, from your perspective, how aware you are of how easy it's been for the club to implement and are they ready to go, basically? Yeah, mate. The, the, the machinations and details behind that are, are well beyond me. Um, look, you know, again, I guess it's it's the kind of world we live in where um, you know, there are certain regulations, and I think, you know, for the most part, they're done for for the health and safety of people. Um, you know, it's been a, it's obviously a challenging game for us, since being mainly because of the kickoff time. But yeah, you know, the, the the again, the, the reports I've got back from the club are that again, the supporters are getting right behind us and. Um, it's obviously going to be a bit of a sacrifice for some of them to get to the game. So, you know, I think we're all appreciative of everything that sort of our supporters have to go through to, to get behind us. But, um, <coughs> you know, key thing for us is we know, it's, you know as many as there are going to be there tomorrow, it's going to be a cracking atmosphere again. And, you know, we, we've got to make sure that we play our part in, uh, in uh, you know, uh, rewarding our supporters for the sacrifices they're making. Yeah, so as far as you're aware, there's, there's no certain concerns that the actual Covid passport will affect the attendance more the awkward kickoff time, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, again, it's probably better people in the club to, to answer that question. But you know, f from my perspective, the feedback I've got is that you know we we can't understand the, the difficult situation uh, this fixture has caused, and um, but again, our supporters have been brilliant in in in, in backing us. Yeah, and just on the pitch, that the group's been very attacking so far. Teams who really just go for it. Are you expecting the same from Ferenc Varos? Yeah, I think so. Um, as you said, it, it has been a really um, open attacking group. Um, you know, all the games, um, even the ones not including us, have had plenty of goals. And uh, yeah, I think so. I think they'll come here and, you know, they probably know they need a result as well. So <coughs> I think, um, you yeah, know, they obviously got a result here last year. So. Um, I expect them to come at us and I expect it to be a you know, pretty open, aggressive game for both teams. So um, it, it should be entertaining, um, should be plenty of goals and hopefully we come out on the right side of it. Ange, can I just ask you to, to tell us a bit more about your, your time with Ferenc Puskas and, and does he have a kind of ongoing influence in the way you set your teams up and you approach games, the, the, your style of play as well? Yeah, look, I, I, I've, I, you know, I've, I've mentioned, I think, a few times, there's been sort of very influences in, in sort of the way I, I look at football, and, and probably the, the predominant one was was my father, but um, Ferenc is probably one of the most significant influences, yeah, for sure. Uh, he came into, you know, sort of my career. I was captain of, of the club at the time, South Melbourne, and um, you know, he's. He's one of the biggest legends of the game. I mean, if, you, if you're talking about one of the greatest ever, he, he makes that list um, of players. And 
he's, he was just a gentleman. Um, you know, from the moment he, he walked through, he he was humble. You know, we were, we were constantly pestering him to tell us stories about, you know, Real Madrid, um, what he did here at Hamden, what he did at Wembley. And he was forever sort of downplaying everything. And, and um, it just showed you that, you know, the greatness of a man was just his humility in dealing with people. And uh, I, I was lucky because when he came to Australia, his English wasn't great, um, but he'd coached Panathinaikos to a European Cup final. Um, so his, his Greek was decent. Um, so I acted almost as an interpreter. I, I used to pick him up from his house and, and drive him in my crappy old car to, to train him, which I was embarrassed about. But, you know, during that time, we swapped many stories and... Um, and his philosophy to football was basically just go out there, enjoy yourself and score goals. You know, we, I remember we used to play with two wingers and he, he was forever telling our wingers never to come back and, and never to defend. And I was a fullback, so he used to infuriate me. Um, but, you know, we, we won a championship with him and, and I can tell you that, um, you know, part of the reason we won was just the atmosphere within the group because... No one wanted to let him down. He was just a great man, and uh, I was really sad when he when he passed away because when he left sort of Australia, um, you know, I wasn't able to to sort of reconnect with him uh, when I got older and became a manager myself because uh, I would have loved to to thank him personally for um, the influence he was as a man as much as he was as a as a as a coach. And just going back to to the game, obviously you managed to get um, Tom Rogic and, and David Turnbull on the, on the the starting lineup on Saturday, and they both obviously produced the goods. Are you keen to kind of keep their creativity in the team as much as possible, or do you have to maybe, you know, get a bit more solid midfield at times as well, or are you just keen to get them get them involved together? Yeah, I mean, it's it, you know that's always the challenge is you know how sort of you know you've always got to have good balance. Um, the key to that, I guess, is you know I think when 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 Tom and, and and Dave are in good physical condition, they they can do the defensive work we need so that you know we don't lose the balance. I think the one you know the the tough bit for them has been that I have been able to rotate them. So you know if you look at through sort of the last stretch of games, they had to play game after game after game, and then that's when I think it becomes you know, too much of a burden on them to do that sort of role. But certainly on, on the weekend, they, they both looked fresh. I mean, Dave hadn't played at all during the time away and Tom felt really good. So I think that showed. Um, I, I mean, that's, I guess that's for me, the, the kind of thing we've just got to keep monitoring. And there may be games where I think, you know, we, we need to give one or two of them, one of them a spell so that we can change things up a little bit. Um, but, you know, I think, when they're both feeling good and fresh, I think it gives our team a real good sort of attacking threat without sort of diminishing any sort of defensive solidity we may need. Andrew? And you talked about how key the atmosphere that Ferenc created at, at the club was. Is that something that you've tried to emulate throughout your career as a manager at, at the clubs you've been at? <clears throat> it certainly uh, highlighted the importance of it to me that, you know, you... you how important it is that, you know, as a leader that, you know, people believe in you. And we, we certainly believed in him. I'm totally different to him in terms of, like I said, he was just, you know, he was he was the most humble of man where he would just talk with everyone and, you know, you could spend hours with him. I'm kind of, you know, not as social as, as he was in, in that respect, but that um, showing that, you know, as a leader, you don't have to fear by you know, um, fear all at all times. We, we wanted to play, it was like playing for your grandfather, mate. We just didn't want to let him down, you know. He was, he was you know, he was old and when he got to us, but he just created that aura about him that we never wanted to let him down. And, and, and that was, yeah, that was pretty strong in terms of showing me that, you know, as a leader, you, the people need to, the people that you're working with, they need to believe in you as much as your ideas. And, um, you know, that certainly was, you know, that certainly was really evident with, with the atmosphere he created at training and, and, you know, at the club. And earlier on, you touched on the qualifying defeat last season that Celtic had to Ferenc Varos. I know a lot has changed at both clubs since then. Is there any value at all at, at looking back on that game at all, heading into this one? Look, not not really, like you said, because so much has changed. I mean, I've obviously spoken to the, to the guys here, the staff and the players who were involved in that last year, but... Yeah, you know, there was no crowd. It was an empty stadium. Um, as you said, both clubs have changed managers. They've changed 
significantly in terms of their team. So I think it will be a totally different sort of contest this time with you know supporters in there and with different approaches. But um, I think the the one thing you do know is that you know they showed last year that you know they they're a challenging team and they'll be coming here to to, to knock us off and, and get a result. And um, for us, it's it's you know pretty evident that we're going to play at our best if we want to get you know the result we want. Hi, Ange. Uh, just, just a quick word on uh, Jota becoming a really important player for the club. I think goal and assist yesterday, goal the previous game as well. How key is he becoming to, to what you want to do? <laughs> yeah, he's, you know, but I mean, Abada went through that spell, Kyogo went through that spell. I mean, I think that's, I'm hoping that's what we're creating. We're creating a team that, you know, has multiple threats in an attacking sense and, um, you know, Jota's slotted in really well. I, I really think there's more to come from him. He's, he'll improve a lot, uh, for sure. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think that that means that, you know, he's the key any more than Kyogo or, or Liel has been. Um, you know, Ajeti, when he played, scored. So I think the way we play helps these attacking players sort of bring out the qualities they have. I think the way we set up and um, I think, you know, Jota himself would be the first to, to say that he's he's benefiting from that, you know. I mean, uh, you know, he scored a great goal, but you're not going to score that goal unless Tommy Rogic has a vision to, to put you through, you know. So it's it's not about one player being a key. And, and I think that's that's what we're trying to create. That's what certainly what I'm trying to create with the team. That You know, on any given day, we have multiple goal threats. And if you look at our goals this year, they've come from just about everywhere and um, we're not relying on one person or even two people to do that um, and you know Jota's playing his part in that and just finally uh, I think you touched on it earlier just about the, the 3 30 kickoff tomorrow European game in the daytime really strange you still hoping for the, the same atmosphere for, from the Celtic fans tomorrow afternoon mate I reckon you could play it at 3 30 a.m and you'd get a great atmosphere at, at Celtic Park I think our supporters will uh, you know um They'll they'll roll up. They'll sing their hearts out. And like I said, our job is to to make sure that we uh, we reward them.